Welcome back to Bible 101, Lesson 8 on Baptism, Part 3. We are going to look at just one of, I don't know, one of my favorite verses of the Bible, passages of the Bible. We're at Matthew 28, 18 through 20. So this is on page 681 in the paperback Bible, first gospel account of the history of Jesus. So Matthew chapter 8, 28, verse 18 through 20. So this is shortly before Jesus is going to ascend into heaven. He's already died. He's risen from the dead. And now he's speaking to his disciples, these starters of the Christian church, and saying, here's what I want you to go do. I have all the authority in heaven and on earth, and here is your mission, should you choose to accept it. And they would, and they would with great, great passion go out and spread the name of Jesus. So here's what Jesus wants his Christians, his disciples, his followers to do. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Beautiful, beautiful words, right? Jesus, risen, the risen Lord, who has authority over everything, gives his disciples their commission. And what does he tell them to do? Go. As you are going, do this. Make this a part of your life. Make this your mission. Go and make disciples of all nations. Any, any limits there for who he wants to be his disciples? No, all nations. Any, any restrictions on, on what races or culture can be his disciples? No, all nations. Does he talk about only women or only men? No, all nations. Um, uh, but but not, not kids or, or not older people? No, God wants all people to be saved. Go and make disciples of all nations. And then he goes on and gives two ways that his disciples are to go out and make disciples. He says, um, go and make disciples of all nations. First, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Trinity, baptize them. And teach them to obey everything I've commanded you. A even better translation that you could use for this is teach them to hold on to everything that I've commanded them. So go and make disciples by, by baptizing. So uh, unbelievers, bringing them to faith and, and making them into believers through his, his word, the gospel, and the sacraments, uh, baptism, and teaching them. Don't stop there after baptism, but continue teaching them to hold on to all the things that I've commanded you. How many of the things? All of them, because they're all important. They're all God's word. Let's, let's look over our questions for this section. According to verse 19, how many people does God want to be baptized? Well, what does it say? What does the Bible say? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. All nations. No limits, no age limits. Uh, the Apostle Peter would say at Pentecost, I think we looked at that last time um, in the homework, that he'd say, um, repent and be baptized, all of you. The promise is for you and your children and all who the Lord our God will call. In verse 19, Jesus gives us the word of God, which is generally used in baptism. What are those words? I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So you can read those as I baptize you in the name of the Father, Holy, Son, and Holy Spirit. Or, or the Greek also goes well like this. I baptize you into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, what's the significance of those words in God's name? Well, there's... There's a couple. One is just think about that picture of being baptized into God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. His name incorporates everything that he is. Uh, when, when Moses wanted to know who God was, he proclaimed his name to him. So when we're born, we are outside of God. We are sinners. We're born um, dead enemies of God. We learned that last time, outside of God. But through baptism, what does God do? He brings us, baptizing us, into in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He brings us into the sphere of God, his righteousness and holiness. 
Baptism sounds pretty powerful and amazing, doesn't it? Because it is. Not because it's special water we're splashing on people, but because of the gospel that we're putting God's name, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's God's word that's doing the work. Uh, we put our name on things that are important to us. I've got my name on my binder that has all my answers to these questions in it because I don't want to lose it. And if I do, I want people to give it back to me. I don't put my name on an old banana peel before I throw that in the compost bin because it's not that important to me. I put my name on my children. I give them my last name. They're important to me. God puts his name on us in baptism. So I'm not just Marcus Nelson. I'm, I'm Marcus, God's son, his child. You are God's child too. Um, you're, you're playing on a team where, where the back says that you're on God's team, and that means you've won the victory. So baptism does that. Um, so I, what could you write in number three? What is the significance of those words? God is showing his ownership and his care of us, putting his name on us. After a person is baptized, what further does Jesus want us to do? Teach them to hold on to everything I've commanded you. That is an important thing for parents, too, when I'm meeting and talking about baptism. This isn't just a church ritual we're going to get together and, and do. Put some water on a baby's head and then we're good. Um, Jesus is going to do a miracle. The Holy Spirit's going to enter that child's heart and give them faith. But it's not as if we just do that and then forget about it. No. The important responsibility of training up our children in the promises of Jesus is so important to keep that faith growing. Last time in our homework, you, you heard about the seeds that fell onto the rocks. And maybe they started out, but then they, they wilted away. Hold on to God's word so you never have to worry about that. Here's a definition of Christian baptism. We saw a general term for baptism, but here's what you could put on the next page for a definition of Christian baptism. The application of water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by which God adopts me into his family. So really, there's three things we need for a Christian baptism to happen. We need water, we need the word of God, and we need a person. Yeah, God adopts me into his family. Um, side note from Matthew 28, Jesus also gives his church their mission in this section, what he wants the church to be doing. One neat way to summarize that could just be like this. You could put it in your notes if you have them. Jesus wants us to grow in the word, teach them to hold on to everything I've commanded you, keep on growing in faith and in the, through God's word. Grow in the word and go with the word. As you go, make disciples. Just sitting and keeping to ourselves is not the mission of the church. Growing and going. So everything a congregation does should be examined in these words, in light of these words. So we might ask ourselves as congregation members, as leadership team, does this help us to grow in the word? Does it help me learn more about Jesus? Does it help me take Jesus to others? Does it help me go with the word? If not, let, let's think about it before we put invest time, money, energy into something. And if it hinders us from growing or going with the word, then no way. We can't have that be part of the ministry that we do. So the mission of the church, including baptism, what a powerful, strong way God brings us into his family.